Every new Star Wars book brings with it a bunch of fun little Easter eggs and connections to other Star Wars stories, and Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule is no different. Today we're going to go over everything in the new High Republic novel, and special thanks to my friend Marv who compiled this list because I was too busy to go back through the book thanks to The Mandalorian. You can follow him on Twitter and check out his excellent Star Wars blog, they're both linked in the description. Spoilers for the book are ahead, so be warned. The captain of the ship that sparks the Great Disaster mentions being hired to transport Saberfish, a creature from a Clone Wars graphic novel from the Ishitib homeworld of Tibrin, to Abrogado Ray, a planet from the book Heir to the Empire. It's mentioned that hyperspace takes on a sickly red color during the Great Disaster, just as it did during hyperspace incidents in stories like Rebels and Battlefront 2. Avar Chris's ability to link the minds of Jedi during battle is never outright called battle meditation, but it's definitely similar to the technique used by Bastila in Knights of the Old Republic, among many others. Bacta is said to be in development on the planet Hetzal, and it's slightly implied but not outright stated that Hetzal is responsible for its creation. The Vratics of Typhera have been historically attributed with being behind the creation of Bacta. In Legends, they were the sole producer, but this has already been proven false in canon stories like Dooku Jedi Lost, which showed other planets growing and producing the substance. The book doesn't go in depth into who was behind the genesis of Bacta, so it could still be the Vratics in theory. The Selkath species are included in a list of theoretical culprits for the disaster on Hetzel out of possible revenge for the prospect of Bacta putting them out of business, an allusion to the Selkath's creation of the Bacta predecessor, Kolto, in Knights of the Old Republic. The Jedi Te'ami uses a dark Cerakote lightsaber, which is one of the hilt customization options in Jedi Fallen Order. Stellan Gios comes to Hetzal from his outpost on Hanestia, the primary planet of Lando's luck by another High Republic author, Justina Ireland. Tiami recalls having once seen a rodeo on Chandar's Folly, the world where Tarkin hunted Vader in Charles Soule's Darth Vader comic run. Monument Plaza and Umate, the peak of a mountain that serves as the only visible part of Coruscant's original topography at the highest level, are a major location in the book. The idea behind them was originally conceived by Ralph McQuarrie and Kevin J. Anderson for the illustrated Star Wars universe before it later appeared unnamed in The Clone Wars. Umate is the highest peak from the Minari range of mountains. The Minari mountains were first mentioned in Heir to the Empire before it became clear that Coruscant didn't really have visible mountains from the top. During the time of the High Republic, the highest level of Coruscant is said to be 5,216. The episode guide for a Season 5 episode of The Clone Wars said the highest level was 5,127, while complete locations later reversed that number to 5,217. The Coruscant Security Force appears with the Chancellor of the Republic of this time. They were first fleshed out by Karen Travis for her Republic Commando novels. Hyperspace Beacons, a concept that goes back to the Legends Tales of the Jedi stories and has been primarily related to older hyperspace technology, are used to enforce the hyperspace lockdown that happens after the Great Disaster occurs. It's said that Starlight Beacon will help people from Boondocky to Bastion. Boondocky is new, but Bastion is notable for being the headquarters of the Imperial Remnant during most of the time after Return of the Jedi and Legends, first shown in the book Spectre of the Past. The Jedi Lorna D wears leather from a Kel Dragon, a species seen in Dark Forces. The planet Elfrona and its Jedi outpost are a primary location in the book. It was also a prominent setting in the Rise of Kylo Ren comic, and I'm assuming it was developed for both stories concurrently. One of the metals found on that planet is Erodium, the Star Wars version of gold that goes back to Rogue Planet. A Jedi Master named Porter Ingall is an Akruki, a species featured in an arc of Charles Soule's Poe Dameron comic. An artist named Omar Barenko is said to be living in Verikino on Naboo during this time. Barenko has been said to be a historical resident of Padme's lake house since Attack of the Clones tie-ins, and now we know he lived during the High Republic. The Wookiee Jedi Padawan, Buri's lightsaber, is made out of amber from a white Rosher tree. Roshers are the giant trees native to Kashyyyk that go all the way back to Heir to the Empire, but white Roshers specifically and its amber were recently mentioned in Master and Apprentice, which was written by another High Republic author, Claudia Gray. The villain of the book, Marchian Roe, reflects on how his father, Asgar Roe, kept the Nile small, operating in a corner of the Outer Rim close to Thol's Shroud by Belsavis. Belsavis was a primary setting in Children of the Jedi, while the nearby Thol's Shroud is lore from the Essential Atlas. The depiction of the planet Iriadu in the book draws many cues from the Tarkin novel, which Sol has drawn from before. The planet's main export being Lamite, an ore used in Transparasteel, is from that book. 
A Republic engineer utilizes systems engineers from as far away as Kuat and Biss. There are technically two Biss planets in Star Wars lore, but one of them, the Abyssin homeworld, is closer to Hetzal, while the other is in the core like Kuat. Assuming it's a reference to the latter, that one was prominently used by Palpatine and was first seen in the Legends comic Dark Empire. A Republic contract pilot mentions booking a vacation for her husband and herself on Amphar, a vacation world mentioned in the Legends book Shield of Lies. The Jedi vessel Ataraxia ends up playing a major role in the book. It was used to transport a young Dooku and other Jedi to Sereno near the start of Dooku Jedi Lost, which would have been about 140 years after this novel. Yaral Poof and Apo Rancisis, two Jedi on the Council in The Phantom Menace, are shown to have served on the Council all the way since the High Republic. Yaral has never technically gotten an age before, but Apo actually wasn't born until after this era in Legends, so that's a minor change, which is complemented by Sol also establishing that Apo survived Order 66 in his Darth Vader comic. Sol must be a big Apo fan. Sol is also a known Yaddle enthusiast, so it's a little surprising to not see her on the council here as well, especially since she's typically known to have trained Oppo. Maybe she's on the council but not mentioned, or maybe that piece of information has changed. Oppo mentions how the Jedi's predecessors won the Great Sith Wars, which was a conflict depicted in the Tales of the Jedi comics and Legends. Yarel also mentions times in the history of the Jedi where their numbers were reduced to only a handful, bringing to mind the purges and losses the Jedi suffered in the Knights of the Old Republic games. A Republic admiral named Cronara alludes to historical conflicts between the Mandalorians and the Republic, which were also a part of that time period. Jedi Master Jorah Mali once purified the kyber crystal of an ancient Sith lightsaber as an intellectual exercise and wound up bonding with the crystal, leading to her white lightsaber. This process is exactly how Ahsoka got her white crystals in the Ahsoka novel. Cronara alludes to having once seen a reek hunt on Elysia. Elysia was the primary setting of the Paradise Snare and was later made one of the reek homeworlds after Attack of the Clones. A Nile leader named Pan Ada kidnapped prisoners from a passenger transport headed to Travnin for Marchion. Travnin was a West End Games planet originally from Galaxy Guide 6. Vernestra Rowe and her new Padawan Emery are mentioned being at the Starlight Beacon dedication, which ties into another High Republic book, A Test of Courage. Jora Molly, thinking about her Padawan wreath Silas, also ties into Into the Dark. The Starlight Temple is said to be designed by renowned Jedi architect Paolo Hidala, who is probably a distant relation of the Gadalhi dynasty, the name being very similar to Pablo Hidalgo from the Lucasfilm Story Group. And that's everything we caught in Light of the Jedi. Thank you again so much to Marv for helping me out with this video. If you want to check out Light of the Jedi for yourself, consider picking it up for free on Audible. Just follow the link in the description or visit www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The audiobook is out right now, and the production value on all the Star Wars books is very high with sound effects and music. It's like listening to a movie. Signing up for an Audible trial will get you a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Light of the Jedi or the other High Republic books, A Test of Courage or Into the Dark, or just about any Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. Let me know if you caught anything in the book that we didn't in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all our High Republic coverage, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page, and give Marv a follow. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.